So wake up everyone, this is my full review of the legendary Cabramante stand. Coming up. This is one of the scooters I'd really like to try riding and if there is a chance, I would try all of them because I really admire the uniqueness and differences of each scooter. Now she's the first, the Mantis 10. I was curious of its features, feels and performance. Finally, I had a chance to ride one. That said, thank you very much to M Titan Electric Scooter Shop here in Thailand. They are very generous to lend me this model to test and review and letting me do pretty much everything I want to do to this scooter and also for my personal pleasure. If you're here in Thailand and may want to get your own PEV, particularly the Mantis 10, I recommend your shop. Their contacts are in the description. I've seen it many times on other channels. They have different experiences and impressions. Will I be getting a similar impressions? The build quality, aluminum frame, stem, and handlebar. Like I've said in my Mantis range and speed test, the stem height is perfect for my height. I'm 175cm. The handlebar might be better if it's a few centimeters longer to add more stability. It feels very skinny and light. It doesn't feel very robust, honestly. But this is actually sturdy enough to handle bigger guys or heavier riders without any problems. The design is simple and very sleek. Probably the sexiest design I've seen so far. This black and red combination is gorgeous. I would prefer black though. I don't know why, but my Mantis 8 and my Nami Bernie Viper are black, so I think that explains. I check all the bolts, seems durable and don't break easily. This has a bell which is very handy in the traffic, people crossing the street and bikers, but this won't work here in Thailand. I notice they don't often use a horn or a bell. This is a quiet place, so even if I use the bell in some situations, they don't seem to understand it. They never turn their heads, even if I was really close to them. But a horn on the other hand is a must for this scooter. This is a fast scooter, so when you're riding swiftly, you will crash to somebody before they notice your bell. It uses a QSS for throttle, which isn't as premium as the mini motor's throttle, but does the job and very responsive. I personally like it. Using this throttle on the Mantis is actually smooth, easy to tame, and not too aggressive. Though it might show incorrect voltage, you may tell your shop to install a voltage meter. It isn't cheap but it always shows you an accurate voltage which is necessary when you're out for a long trip to check your remaining battery. In most reviews, many don't like these grips, and I understand them why. But for myself, I like it because the size is bigger than other models and grips well. My Mantis 8 has this kind of grip, and if you're not comfortable on this, I suggest buying gloves, or if you have one, try it if it feels better. Gloves will protect your hands in the event of fall. The brake lever has this rubber, in which I hope every scooter has. Okay, braking. Nice. There are buttons to limit your speed and battery consumptions. There are the echo mode, turbo, single and dual motor buttons. The wires are neatly wrapped. It has this thing which I usually use to put a plastic bag for my food. It works, but this actually functions as a hook to the deck to make lifting this scooter easier. Normally, you just want to grab the stem, but I like lifting it by holding the kicktail and bottom of the stem. But if you're comfortable lifting it by the stem, that's totally fine. Just make sure it is sitting properly so you're safe. The triple clamp stem locking system. It is easy to open and lock, but it just takes time. No problem if you're not in a hurry. The stem has very little play. I like the design of the rubber grip, and the deck is long. It has plenty of space for your lengthy stance, even going fast which I usually put my chest closely to the handlebar. It still has enough space. The rubber grip isn't slippery even when it's wet. This is similar to my Mantis 8 which I had ridden in the rain when I caught several times. Now the issue here isn't the rubber grip if you feel slippery, rather how tough is your shoe's elastic texture. Check your shoes now. And full rubber grip on the deck is better than few grip tapes. Though I wish the deck is a little bit wider. I love this kick tail, it's perfectly angled and it's the best kick tail I've seen so far. It helps a lot when going fast and you could put a grip tape 
for an extra hold. Now this has no waterproof rating, so better not to use in the rain. I don't use my scooters in the rain unless I'm caught by the rain. I consider using my scooters in the wet road only, but not in the rain. The kickstand is very important to me. I mean how can you leave your scooter standing with a flimsy kickstand? This has a thin one, but enough to handle the weight of this scooter. It has only one charging port. 60 volts, 18.2 amp battery, takes 9 hours to fully charge. It has a very cool light strips, both sides, and are very visible at night. The front and rear are also bright, however, when you brake, people will not notice that you are actually braking. Also, I hope the next versions of the Mantis 10 would have a usable headlight for safety and front visibility, like its bigger brothers. The fenders front and back are short, though if you're like me, you will not get wet because we don't ride in the rain. It has dual spring suspensions which has enough comfort and dampening on the road. Just be careful on the bad surface and I don't advise using the Mantis off-road. This 10 inches tires also help the dampening and has good traction, though at first I thought this slim tire would slip when cornering. It actually allowed me to do hard cornering. Now this has 60 volts, 18.2 amp battery. I was impressed of the range test result. You probably saw my previous video that I get 45 kilometers of range from 90 to 35 percent of the battery. Now if I had continued and drained the battery, I would surely get 60 to 65 kilometers of range, which is impressive because I wasn't riding slow. But I will never drain the battery to avoid damaging it. The top speed is 72 kilometers per hour without load and me 76 kg on it was 62 km per hour. I'm pretty sure it could get higher if I had continued. Now this is just to give you an idea of the speed you could possibly get considering your own weight. Now the reasons for me to purchase this model are the size, weight, kick tail, bright under deck lights, range, speed, and best handling. And there's definitely next versions. I didn't see any cons, it's always just a personal preference. There are just some things that will make the Mantis even better like a headlight, horn, turn signals, additional range, and most importantly, waterproofing. Because even though you plan not to use your own scooter in the rain, we could not control the weather. You will always caught in the rain. This is a great value for the box, and I recommend the Mantis 10 to beginners and experienced riders. Beginners don't need to start from small and slower scooters, then eventually upgrade later. Don't waste your money. You will just improve your skills in no time. Get a scooter you want and full protection. Just start from mode 1 and ride responsibly in a right place. Thank you so much to M Titan Electric Scooter Shop for lending me this amazing scooter. Again, if you're here in Thailand, you can contact M Titan and order the Mantis 10. The owner is very helpful and responsive to the customers. Their contacts are in the description. And if you're living in another country, I'm pretty sure there's a shop of Cabo. Next video is the range test of the Hero S10. You would be surprised. And if you enjoy watching videos like this, please like and subscribe with a notification bell so you'd be informed every time I uploaded a video. And I'll see you in the next one. So do you care?